So let's look at designing a decoder. We're going to look at a 2x4 decoder, then a 3x8 and then a 4x16. But what's important in this video is that you can see that we've originally started off with our little CPU design and we've built a few of the blocks. So we've built a memory, a 1-bit, an 8-bit, an enable and a register. But from this video onwards, we're actually going to go and start looking at the completed CPU design. So we're going to go and download the entire CPU. So we'll open up the CPU design, which is in the resources section. And we'll get the 4x16 and the 3x8 decoder from this as opposed to building it by hand. So you can go ahead and build it by hand if you want to, or you can use these here as a basis to build your own. Or you could just use the ones that we actually have here and you can simulate on the actual designs that we have here. So it's up to yourself what you would like to do. So good luck and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. So what is a decoder? Well, it's quite a simple thing. Let's imagine we have two inputs. So for example, we could have an input A, which is this column, and an input B, which is this column. So we've only really got two bits, bits A and bit B. But those two bits could give us four possible combinations. So we could have a 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So in effect, we could be putting two bits in, but we can get four out. So this is a two by four decoder. It takes the two bits and gives us access to all four combinations of those two bits. So let's go ahead and we'll look at the three by eight. So this is a 3x8 decoder. We've got three inputs, so we've got three bits we can get in, and we've got eight possible combinations of those three bits as an output. So that means we've got three in and eight out. So this is a 3x8 decoder. So we need to build a circuit that will allow us to get access to all of the combinations of the individual bits that we put in here. So let's go ahead and we'll see how to do that. So what we have here is the start of a 2x4 decoder. I've got an input A and an input B and I've just put the wire down for those. I've also created a not A and not B by putting these through an inverter. So I've now got a not A and not B. So for example, when A and B are 0 and 0, the not A and not B are going to be 1 and 1. Now what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to turn the output on these AND gates high depending on what the input is. So for example, if the input is 0 and 0, I want this one to go high. If the input is 0 and 1, and the A and B, I want this one to go high. If the input is 1 and 0, I want this one to go high. And if the input is 1 and 1, I want this one to go high. So I have to connect these four up to these two to create a 2 by 4 decoder. So let's see how we're going to do this. If we want to get a high on the output here, this is an AND gate, so both inputs will have to be high. So in order for that to be true, if we've got a 0 and a 0 here, the only way we can get the inputs high from a 0 and 0 is if we take the complement. So when we take the complement, we connect this one here to the not A, I will connect this one to the not B. So we can see here now that whenever we've got a zero and a zero here, we get a high output. So if I was to change these, you can see the output has changed to a low. So that's quite straightforward. So let's look at the next one. If I wanted to get a high on the output here for a zero and a one input, 
It would mean that uh, in order to get the high output, both of these would have to be high. In order to do that, I would have to come from the complement of A to make this 1. But I don't need to come from the complement of B because B will already be high. So I can go straight to B. And this here is the second part of our decoder because whenever we put a 0 and a 1 in, then this should go high. And there you see it, that's us moved on to the next part of the, the decoder. So look at the third one now. In order for this to 1 and 0 to give us a high, well, we have our 1 for A already, so that can go straight to A. And we have our, a 0 here for our B. So in order for the 0 to go high, we'll have to go to the B complement. So that's the B complement there. So now if we simulate it, we'll see that we're going to have a 1 and a 0. So let's put a 1 and a 0. And you can see this one has gone high. So finally, if we want a 1 and a 1 to go high, well, that one's quite easy. We can just go straight from A and B. So I go to A, I go to B. Whenever we put in a, a 1 and a 1, you see this goes high. So this is us built a 2x4 decoder. So let's run through it. So it goes 0 and then it'll go to the 1 and then it'll go to 2 and then it'll go to 3. So it counts 0, 1, 2 and 3 or if you like 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's us built a decoder. So it's a simple decoder we've built a 2 by 4 but we're actually going to use 3 by 8 and also 4 by 16 decoders and I'll go ahead and build those now. And I suggest you go and try and build those yourself. They're the same type of uh, logic as we've got here. Uh, but it just gets a bit more complicated when you're adding in three inputs and then four inputs. It's easy to get lost in it. So you can either build them yourself or you can just take a copy of the one that I've got here. So this is us at a bit of a crossroads in the CPU design. We've been able to design a one bit memory one byte of memory that enable the register and we've also seen how to build a decoder. But this 2 before decoder is not what we want. We actually want a 3x8 and a 4x16. Now you can go ahead and build those yourself if you want and continue building these this up yourself. Or you can go and open up the finished CPU design. So in order to do that we can get into project load library Logisim library and you get access to CPU under this underscore design in the, in the resources section. So you can go and you can download that and we can open that up and you'll see it appearing here at the bottom. So this CPU design here was for us in order to get used to using Logisim and used to building up circuits. So hopefully you have a good understanding of how to do that now. So we're going to be moving on from this little section here onto the actual CPU design. So if I click on that CPU design, you'll see the entire CPU is sitting within there. And you can see some of the blocks we've built up and they're the same blocks that we have in the CPU designs. For example, the MEM1, the MEM8, the Enable and the Register. But from this point on, we're going to be using the actual CPU design here because it's going to take a long time for me to go and build it up by hand. And you don't really need to do that and to watch that because I've got it all built here already. So, for example, let's go in and we can look at a 4x16 decoder. So if we double click on that, this is the 4x16 decoder circuit, so I'll make it a bit smaller so that we can we can see it. Okay, so that's a 4x16 decoder, but it's exactly the same as the, the 2x4 decoder. The, the theory is just the same for it. So you can go in here and you can actually open these up and you can simulate within each of these individual blocks and you can see how these work. So equally, if you want to build it yourself, you can open up a couple of instances of the 
Logisim and you can start building it and you can use this here as a template or you can just copy it out and you can paste it into your own design or if you want you can just listen along to the videos if you're not building the actual CPU So we can also have a look at the 3x8 decoder and there it is here CPU decoder th underscore 3 underscore 3 times 8 So we can open that up here We can go ahead and you can simulate this actual decoder here and if you want you can copy it into your own instance and create an own, your own instance for it if you would like or you could just use this one so for example we've got 000, zero, zero so we've got a zero coming out that's the most significant bit and that's the least significant bit so we can hit on a, a one with that you see the next one coming live and then it will count through this in a binary fashion okay so you can get through this yourself and you can test this out and see how it works so that's all there is for the decoder section we're going to be using this in the ram so that's all there is for this video i'll get you on the next video goodbye